And we're back, and we got a new truck today. We're looking at the Team Corrali Kagama. Their brand new 6S truck that just came out. Um, this is pretty exciting. They haven't come out with anything new in a long time. The last full release was the 2021 XTR uh, Coronos. And that was the last version, so it's been a year and a half, almost two years since they've done a new full release on a 6S truck. Um, this is the um, the running mate to the Asuga. Um, as far as that's a big buggy, this they share a lot of the same parts. Um, this one looks more truck and is more to the size of the Coronos, the Creighton. Um, the Sledge is within that category, but they did do some upgrades to this that's really nice. This is the RTR version. It also comes in a roller. Um, I go with the RTR because Team Corrales electronics are not that bad. They're pretty good. Um, they're fast. Um, probably the only drawback, maybe the servo could be a little better, but it does come with a high voltage servo that most people don't mention or even notice, but it's high voltage, but the BEC on the ESC is not cranked up. So if you turn that up, you can get better performance right out of the box out of this servo. <clears throat> That's just something I wanted to mention first to get that out of the way. Um, the truck shares, I think, 70 to 80 percent of the parts with the Kronos and the V2 versions, and then <clears throat> there's a lot of other stuff that is different and changed. We'll go over that in a second. Um, first of all, the thing that's changed is the body is totally different. Um, they went with this new style. And I don't think it looks too bad. I mean, it definitely doesn't represent any realistic truck, but it is pretty decent. It's better looking than their past body on the Coronos. Didn't really care for that one too much. This one is a little bit more aggressive looking. Uh, looks a little more full bodied. Um, and the paint isn't so... It's still kind of a scattered paint job, but not such a mess. It's a little bit more uniform. I like that. It comes in three different colors. It comes in the blue, uh, Team Corrali Classic Red, and it also comes in a green. The one we have here is the green version. And yes, I've already took a peek at it, and it is a good looking truck. Um, but anyway, let's get into it real quick and not make this too long of a video. Um, the thing we need to go over is the features that this has. And I got a very limited space. When this is a huge box, so we'll try it this way. So it comes with the same shocks, new shock towers, different suspension arms with braces um, on the ends to help with support. The new ready to run comes with all the spring still out drives and cups, um, a whole new bracing system. They're calling it a hybrid bracing system, so it's kind of like a triangulated brace, quite a bit better. Comes with the same differentials and stuff as before. Um, except for the cups are different and they always held up really well for me I've never had any problems this one has the updated knuckles on it that they put came out with on the V2 this will you should have no problems with knuckles or anything and they this is a new upgrade they did full CNC aluminum suspension arm holders that's a pretty good uh, feature to add to a ready to run we'll go over the radio in a minute but it comes with the the radio that comes with the Asuga and the Skeeter. Pretty decent radio. Works pretty well. It's got a nice foam grip. Um, this is the original power system that came in all of. Not the servo, but these two are the same power systems. 150 amp. They are extremely fast. Sometimes you might they might run a little hot, but they are quick. They are faster than a lot of the others out there. I don't know if it's just the way the programming is, but they are pretty fast. Um, and this is the servo that comes with in the Asuga and also in the Skeeter and this is a high voltage servo I believe it's the same one in the Skeeter it's high voltage so you can crank it up it says 25 kilograms I'm guessing that's not cranked up so it probably is more like 27 28 somewhere in there if you crank it up to 7.4 on the BEC this is a fully programmable uh, speed controller and um, it's the same thing as a Hobby Wing Max 8, the old version. Alright, let's get this thing opened up. Like I said, I've already opened it up and looked at it. I'm just going to crack it open here real quick. And since how the box is so big, uh, we're probably going to cut this part out. 
Okay, there's the truck out of the box, and like I said, um, it's hard to tell how decent looking this body is, but the proportions, the side view of this body is far better than their previous ones. I think the only one that was probably better was the Punisher body. That one was probably pretty popular because it seemed like it was really hard to come across again. I don't know why they stopped making it because I think that was probably the one that everybody wanted. Um, but yeah, we, that truck was pretty cool looking and this one is a, a very good looking paint scheme. Um, if you pull the body off you can see it's all flat here. Then you got the gray that's gloss and then it's hard to see but oh, you can probably get it a little bit there. There's some flake in the green which really makes it pop. Uh, I really like that. Uh, nice touch. They run the graphics up the wing so that it matches the color scheme on each red, blue, and green color. Uh, before we get too much into the truck, let's just open up the box and look at the remote real quick. Yeah, so the only thing that's in the little white box is the remote is the CT2R. Pretty decent little radio. In my Skeeter, I've never upgraded the radio because I actually didn't mind the way that this one feels. I haven't had any glitching problems or anything like that. It has all your functions. It has reverse steering and throttle reversing. It has throttle trim, steering trim, throttle trim, and dual rate for the steering. So just your basic functions. Um, on and off switches here. Basic four double A's. You get your instruction manuals. It looks like it comes with a radio lanyard, which is pretty cool, so you can hang it around your neck. I like that touch. And a keychain, Team Corelli keychain. Okay, let's get into the specifics of the truck, uh, what the changes are. Like I said, it's gonna share some parts with the Asuga, it's gonna share some parts with the older versions, and it's got some of its own new stuff. Um, the body, of course, that's new to the truck, specific to the truck. You got the triangulated brace system here that has the aluminum supports. Looks like it's all gusseted and beefed up really well. Goes down to the chassis in both directions. Super beefy plastic pieces. I mean, we're not talking, these things are huge as far as this part goes, how thick that is. There is no flex in it at all. Um, this upper part and this looks to be the same as what was on the Skeeter. So this actually hits the body, helps protect the body. So the bumpers on the top of the body. These bumpers here. They actually hit perfect on this. So that's going to help with impact and not beat the body up so bad. Rear braces here look to be the same as the original ones. But they were pretty beefy. There was no problems there. Shock towers are different. Front and rear. It kind of looks like the geometry might be a little bit different, just a little bit. Um, it's hard to say until I put it up against the Coronos, but uh, it is a little bit different. It still has adjustable front and rear, so you can adjust two different holes on the front, two different upper holes on the rear shock tower, two holes on the bottom arms in the front. You can adjust the shock, so it's a good, it's nice when you can adjust your suspension especially on a truck this big you know it does help I mean basic out-of-the-box setups usually good but if you're into it and been around for a while sometimes tuning is really good um, fluid wise one thing they upgraded is this says the ready to run comes with the four millimeter shock pistons so they're super beefy so it comes in the XTR and it comes with the heavy duty rod ends on the bottom of the shocks which is also what was included with the latest version of the XTR um, gearbox case motor mount and everything and right here all this is the same except for it comes with the spring steel out drives you can see they're that copper color those are all the way around that's a new feature to the ready to run the radio box is exactly the same as it's been on versions one two three of these 6S trucks, um, it, no problem. It actually helps stiffen up the front of the chassis a little bit. Um, need to install the antenna tube. This is the high voltage servo, so if you get one of these trucks, program it, set it up to get that high voltage going to that servo, make sure it's on. Their side guards are different, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like the side guards are all completely different. They have a little bit of a 
rigidity to the side of them now, uh, this little piece here. You can see with the arms, that now the biggest change to this truck would be... It's hard to tell if the chassis is the same. To be honest with you, I would assume it's pretty close to the original one, but it may be different. I can tell right now the front and rear skids, which are beefy and sure do help. Those are the same that were on version 2 and the XTR, but the arms are different. So all the lower arms are completely lower. and So the front, upper and lower arms on the fronts are different, and the rear arms are different. They're totally beefed up, a lot different than the other ones. Um, and they seem to feel like they're made out of a softer plastic, a little bit more flexible. There was some, oh yeah, look at how it's flexible, but you can still feel how rigid it is. That should be pretty good for bashing, bending, and not, you know, not breaking too much. All right, so let's speed this up. Tires are the same as the original ones, and these tires hook up really well. The wheels have changed. They're a spoke design. Hopefully they hold up. I think they should. They seem to be webbed pretty well. And what else we got here? Oh, one thing I know. One thing they did change on, or at least that's different on this compared to one of my versions, is they have the capacitor pack. I think this was on V2s too. Also, that kind of helps with the heat in the ESC. All the arms are equipped with the ability to put carbon fiber inserts in them to stiffen them up if you want to. Um, in a basher, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that is option part. Also, he, they have carbon fiber pieces for here. Um, the one thing they did not update, and it looks like the straps are the same, that I really wish they would have made longer, is these straps are way too short for if you're running dual 3S hard packs these are not big enough and it's not tall enough in the front so the second pack sits above this ledge and you have a problem of it falling out now i did test fit on the asuga which is the same battery tray you can fit the gens ace uh, basher lipos in here if you remove this piece here completely take that out and then those basher lipos fit but then you need to get an optional strap that goes up and over front to back to really lock those down and uh, as soon as I figure out what straps will work in here you should get some different straps um, they do oh, they changed the mounting position of the switch it's nice and locked in to its own little pocket down there screwed in it used to be mounted here and would rotate around so that's pretty good it's got fixed upper links in the rear and fixed steering links so they're just plastic I think with like a metal insert or something inside the upper um, but the, those should work pretty good no, no need for adjustment and then they put in the, the rock guards here to help protect the drive shafts but mostly to protect the shocks um, these things really shoot a lot of boulders so it helps protect those shock shafts from getting too ripped up um, rear wing mount rear wing rear wing button all that stuff is exactly the same as before. Rear hub carriers are the same, offset and axles. Um, so you got CVAs in the front. And the rear, believe it, yep, it's just dog bone. The one thing that we haven't went over yet, as you can see down in here, that old full aluminum CNC suspension arm brace. There's four of those. Front and rear, so you got two in the back, two in the front. That's a super nice feature. Those things look super beefy. You're not going to rip them out, and you also have the aluminum spacers. You can see this red spacer down in there that helps support around the hinge pin on the arm, give it a little bit more bracing so it don't split that out. Anyways, guys, that's a wrap up of the unboxing on the Kagama. Uh, I may have missed a few here, there, whatever, but I think we went over all the basics. Cool new truck. Can't wait to rip it. It's going to be a blast. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, on the next video, we'll be ripping this one. Thanks, guys.